question if ever watch a nightly news TV broadcast. I know I've, I've spoken against it so many times. Don't listen to them. They're all tweaked. Um, I get my news on conservative websites, but then, but then even the news, um, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. I, I, I think we can all agree the things are, that are going on are, the things that are stirring are crazy, and it, it's, it, it, it reminds me of the, 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 the Civil War and brother, fighting brother over, over essentially not much. I think slavery would have died of its own volition, given its time it was already in its waning years. But I find myself thanking God as I listen to these things. I, I find myself thanking God for the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. We've got the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The Message Bible says it, says it like this. Isaiah's question, Is there anyone around who knows God's Spirit? Anyone who knows what he's doing? has been answered. Christ knows. And we have Christ's Spirit. Amen? Amen. I have said, I have often said, I have the mind of Christ, brain or no brain. Sometimes I act like it. But the real question is, are we spending, are we spending enough time with the Master? Are we spending enough time with Holy Spirit to have that mind of Christ, because that mind of Christ is of the Spirit, and we aren't going to achieve it any other way. It's only going to come through Holy Spirit. He is the one who fills us. If we have asked for that baptism of the Spirit, if we have asked for the infilling of that Holy Spirit, then that is a part of what we received. We received also the mind of Jesus Christ within us. So we don't have to depend on our own judgments. We don't have to depend on our own perceptions. We can go to Him for His. Amen? We good with that? Amen. The world is screaming. It's screaming prejudice. It's screaming discrimination, segregation, racism. It's all over the map. Amen? We hear it every day, sometimes all day long. We hear it. Prejudice. Prejudice judges someone's character by their outward appearance. That's not right. Prejudice. Discrimination de deprives a person of the right to have. Discrimination. Segregation deprives the right to belong, and stereotyping deprives the right to even be. And racism deprives a person of even the right to be born. Why? Why do we see these things being exercised in our, in our world today? And why? Honestly, when we look at the church, we see so much of the church, the body of Jesus Christ, acting like this. These things should not be. If we pray that the world would, would see the light, if we pray that the world would see Christ in us, then we've got to start acting. Somebody's got to start acting like they know Holy Spirit. Like they hear the mind of Christ and they, and they react and act the mind of Christ in their lives. It seems the whole world is emphasizing all the differences instead of the similarities of mankind. You know, when I was a boy, they taught that that America, the United States of America, was a melting pot. But people, I don't see anybody melting anymore. We're supposed to be living sacrifices on the altar of God, but I don't smell smoke. And yes, it's been that way a long, long time. We don't have to think about the Jews and the Samaritans. Amen? Today, wow. Take stereotyping. Stereotypes lead us into prejudice. It's like a lazy man's prejudice. It lumps generalities to groups of people. Like, all the kids today are rebellious. Are they really? Are they really? 
Are they really? Is that really true of all kids? All women are temperamental. Is that really true? Okay, all kids are rebellious. <laughs> you get it. You get it. The dumb blonde jokes, right? You know, one blonde said to another blonde, yeah. Portuguese jokes, we get them. <laughs> we get them. We get them. That's stereotyping. That is stereotyping. But the Bible says this in 1 Samuel 16, 16, 7, talking about David. He said, but the, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's stereotyping. Amen? We good? We're going to learn this. Then there's prejudice. Prejudice, I think, is, is ignorance. It's ignorance from the get-go. Prejudice. It divides, it separates, and it does it without the facts. No facts involved, all feeling. All feeling. Without any first-hand knowledge. It thinks it knows, but it really doesn't know anything. It's taking a stand on nothing. Look at this. After Jesus healed the blind man, you remember the man that was born blind? You may recall that. Healed the blind man, and, and he saw the faith in that man, and he turned right at the Pharisees and, and, and pointed out their prejudice. He said this in John 9, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were there with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. We'll go to the Message Bible again just to bring some clarity to this, to this verse in case you missed it. Jesus said, I came into the world to bring everything into the clear light of day, making all the distinctions clear so that those who have never seen will see and those who have made a great pretense of seeing will be exposed as blind. Some Pharisees overheard him and said, does that mean you're calling us blind? And Jesus said, if you were really blind, you'd be blameless. But since you claim to see everything so well, you're accountable for every fault and every failure. Those are powerful words. Those are powerful words of a judgmental spirit. So prejudice is, is very emotional and it's centered on, on feelings and, and not facts. The arguments that, that are taking place. Democrats arguing with Republicans and Republicans arguing with Democrats and, and most of what's being argued over is, is feelings. It's not fact at all. It's feelings that are taking place. And what about racism? It's nothing new, is it? Racism? John 1, 46, Nathaniel, talking about Jesus, said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Is this news? Is it news? Amen. That's stereotyping unto prejudice. Amen. It's the kind of thinking that leads us into racism. You might remember the Samaritan woman at the well, when Jesus met her at the well. Jesus asked her for water. And she looked at him and said, how can you, being a Jew, ask me, being a Samaritan woman, because Jews don't have any dealings with Samaritans? Racism. Racism. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good, what is necessary for edification, that we might impart grace to the hearer. We're supposed to be people that impart grace, not hate. Grace. Not resentment. Grace to the hearer. Some folks believe that they can take a step up by stepping on somebody's back. And you will never be smaller than you were 
if you do that. The Apostle Paul said, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you, he said, let each of you out of not only his own interests, but also seek out the interests of others. What else can you say about racism? Well, the Bible says it's foolhardy. It's foolish. It's arrogant, and it's filled with pride. Filled with pride. Acts 17, 26. I wish I could put these up for you. And He, God, has made from one blood every nation of men. Try this again. And He, God, has made from one blood. Everybody say, one blood. There's there's one blood has made from one blood every nation of men who dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, deceives himself. Woo! This is strong stuff we're putting out here this morning. This is strong stuff. Now, I think we've missed it several times. What else can you say? What else can you say? Even the Apostle Peter had his comeuppance in Acts chapter 10 when uh, the vision God gave him of the sheet, you know, and all the unclean. He said in, in the last verse, he said, I perceive, this is so good. It's like, I perceive that God shows no partiality. <laughs> really, Peter? You got all that? Sometimes God has to move us someplace in life, someplace on a rooftop, someplace where He can get us alone just to show us those things. God isn't a respecter of persons. Amen? Amen. God is not a respecter of persons. Every nation, Acts 10.35, but in every, but every nation, whoever fears Him, God, and works righteousness is accepted by Him. We need to listen to the words of the Bible as they speak to our hearts because God is, you know, we, we sang this morning, holy, you are holy. We've got to listen to some of the words that Jesus tells us in the Bible. We've got to listen to some of the things that the prophets told us. We need to read the words and, and begin to apply them to our lives because they're true. No matter what we think, those words are true. This is my B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. They're all here. Every one of them. But are we listening? Are we walking in close proximity with the Holy Spirit? Just walking in the Spirit whereby we can place ourselves in Him, hearing from Him to do what He wills. The world's in chaos. Amen? It's confused. The world's tormented. It doesn't know where to turn. It's demonized. It, 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 it joins all creation groaning. The only thing that is going to remedy the situation is the return of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what's going to do it. But in the meantime, God said, occupy. Occupy and, and be righteous. God is colorblind. We ought to be also. Blood is blood. One blood. God made all mankind. One blood. One blood. I charge you this morning with the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy. I'm going to leave you with this. I think I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to start to leave you with this. 
1 Timothy 5, Paul said, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is us. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. As God and the Lord Jesus Christ is and are my witness, I charge you. And with the elect of angels. So he said, with God and the Lord Jesus, that would be the Holy Spirit, and all the angels of heaven, I charge you. Observe these things, all these things, without prejudice, and doing nothing with partiality. Don't go crazy now. Do nothing with partiality. And do nothing with prejudice in your heart. It's not about I like you better than the other guy. I like you better than the other girl. I like your looks. I like your car better, so I'll talk to you about car stuff. I like your horse, I like your pickup, I like your trailer, so you're my favorite. It's not about partiality. We are equal in the eyes of God. And we ought to be equal with one another. Where do you think all the strife and all the turmoil comes from? The Bible tells us because we're seeking our, seeking our own stuff. So if you wouldn't seek your own stuff, there'd be no trouble in the world. Walk it out where I put you. You don't have a $200,000 motor home because if I gave it to you, you, didn't, you wouldn't be able to keep it. Therefore, you do not have it. If I wanted you to have it, I'd give it to you and I'd provide the means for you to own it. But we circumvent God. Oh, only 84 payments? <laughs> I can do that. But just about $50 a month over budget. Oh, I can take 102 payments. Oh, okay, that, that's cool. I can do that. I can do that. Listen, race makes no difference to God. Again, he's colorblind. Yellow, red, black, white, brown. Did I miss any? And we should be the same. Watch your judgments. Watch your judgments. We're called to judge fruit, not trees. I'll say that again. We are called to judge fruit, not trees. Amen? Did you get that okay? We're called to judge fruit, not trees. Galatians 3, 28 and 9, There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody that don't get that? Cool. Cool. But we need to walk this out. We need to walk this out. What comes out of our mouth? What, what judgments are we, are we pouring forth out of our mouths? Because he's a black man? Because he's a, because he's a Jew? Because he's Indian? With a dot or a feather? It doesn't matter. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, he says, then you are Abraham's seed. Your heirs according to the promise. In essence, act like it. If you're a priest in the kingdom of God, then act like a priest. Do priest stuff. Forgive. 
heal, counsel, love. No matter what the world likes, and it looks crazy. I'm done. No matter what the world likes, and it looks crazy. Let's not be crazy too. Let's not be crazy too. You know, we're, we're, to, we're to be one in Christ. And we're to act like it. Segregation, out the window. Racism, no. Uh-uh. Partiality, no. It doesn't register with us. Discrimination, no. Quit it. Quit it. We, we try so hard to keep those things out of, out of, out of our, our office body, out of our, our church body. And if it's a struggle here, then it's got to be a struggle out there. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. We can be bigger than that. If you hold prejudice in your heart this morning, then call it out in the name of Jesus. Speak to your, speak to your spirit man. Spirit man, be bold within me. Spirit of prejudice, leave in the name of Jesus. Get out of my life. Judgmentalism, leave in Jesus' name. Stereotyping, I got no room for you. Get away. Get away from me. Drive those spirits out. Stand against them and they will flee. But if we keep opening the door and inviting them in, they're going to come back and they're going to bring all their buddies with them. And our stinking condition is going to be worse than it was in the beginning. But drive those demons away from you. Call them, call them for, for who they are. Because we hear them. They speak into our ears. We meet a, a smelly man on the street. Don't touch him. You might get it. Step aside. Let him go. Don't minister to his needs. You know, he wants to be homeless. All those things, they speak to us. And, and, and often enough, we sidestep. And we don't help. Why? Why? Because those things rise up within us. Prejudice, discrimination, segregation, racism. This fellowship will have none of it. Amen? This fellowship will have none of it. Let me, let me try it over here. Zero. Zero zip. Nada. I had a brother because he's an Indian. Yeah. And, and he told me, I did not hold this against him. He told me the chuck wagon should be full of arrows. <laughs> but did I judge him for that? <laughs> No, I did not judge him. I told him it was a good idea. <laughs> Somebody put these hats up here. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Hey, you guys, let's, let's break this thing and, and let's love one another. And let's, let's love those that exist in the world outside our door. Let's hold back our prejudices. Hold back our segregational mindsets, our, our racist minds, our discriminatory minds. You know, we had a memorial yesterday for Kelly Shoemaker, one of the most, one of the least judgmental men I, I know that ever walked this planet. 
He had the grace and the mercy of God on him. He, he had a gift of helps. He, he would never not help someone, ever. That's where all this came from. We can walk a beautiful and glorious walk in Christ Jesus if we'll only do the things that He's asked us to do. It's not about religion. Religion will kill you. It's about loving Jesus Christ, loving God the Father, and walking with the Holy Spirit of God. He is our counsel. He should be our strongest word. He is our faithful counselor. Seek Him, and you will never be wrong. It was Jesus Himself who said, I only do what I see the Father doing. I only say what I hear the Father saying. If that were true of us today, you wouldn't hear a sound except the goodness of God flowing from our mouths to one another. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord God, for your presence. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your ministry. I thank you for speaking to hearts today. It's in only, only the way that, that you possibly can. You know us so well. You know us for who we are. You, you know the judgments we make. You know the remarks that we make. You know the things that we say. And God, you love us anyway. Your patience is incredible. But one day you're going to say enough. And Lord God, every person in this room wants to be right with you in that time. Every one of us wants to be partakers of the new kingdom, the new heaven, the new earth. Every one of us wants to exercise our eternal and glorious life with you. So Father, we just ask in Jesus' name, that your ministry would so move in our hearts that we would become people who control what we say, people who bless beyond blessing, people who do the work that the Holy Spirit has asked when he asks us in Jesus' name. Father, bless our fellowship together. Bless our food as we gather. And, and, and Lord, bless the coffee and, and, uh, and, and multiply, multiply the coffee. And Father, just allow us to have the fellowship and the union of the saints. Father, in peace we, we arrived this morning. And in peace we go. And in love with one another we say amen. 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 God bless you everyone. Give somebody some sugar before you get outside and we'll see you downstairs. <laughs>